video this is video number three today we are recording our own samples in and pretty much building our own instruments because the black box gives us the power to take a mono synth input build it up and end up with a end up with polyphony that you can play Let's get started on an all new project where we're going to do nothing but record in our own samples. We're not going to hunt for any. We already know what we want. We're going to play in what we want. And that's the power of the black box as a performing tool. So we're going to go to presets. We're going to go to file and we're going to go to new and we're going to make a brand new one. So we're going to clear this name and we're going to call this uh, black box space tutorial uh, 3 and I'm going to call this YouTube and backspace when you screw up it's pretty hard to hit these hit these uh, letters I'm getting better at it and there we go, enter. And there's our brand new preset. And it's all completely empty. We have nothing. We have no sequences and we have nothing. Now I advise you to watch, this is video number three, but I advise you to watch one and two because you may get pretty lost if you're not careful. So here we go. So I got a analog synthesizer hooked up. Monophonic, so all I can do is play one note on it. But if but if you but you heard, I can play chords. And we're gonna and we also have only one output on this monophonic synth, which means it is mono. It is right in the middle of the center. There's nothing stereo about it. But with a few little tips and tricks, we can make our own stereo poly monophonic synth on the black box after we sample it in. And we can do that on a black box because the black box is so good at recording. Absolute top quality, top notch recording. So we're going to start up here in this little corner. There's my sound. But what I'm going to do is this first sound, I'm going to fade it out in, in, um, in two measures. Now on song, we're going to pick out our beats per second and we're going to go 90 beats per second today. You do that on song mode. Then we're going to go to, back to pads and we actually start to record our samples in. It'll be at the correct tempo. Now this, this knob here controls which parameter we're going to adjust. Record input is left right 
the recording input is coming in from the input and the input is only left right stereo. We can change it to mono later if you want. The gain has to do with how much going out and it's going out output one so I can monitor it off of output one since we have three outputs. Length I got is custom because we're going to play the sample in and then trim it down. Trimming it down will save space and uh, give us a, a sample that we can work with. We don't, we don't need quantize and the threshold is off. Now if you use threshold and turn that on, then the threshold below that, the negative 2, uh, negative 20 dB, that is when it would kick in. But I'm finding out that these, these record threshold automatic deals are just not fast enough. What you end up doing is clipping off the beginning of the, of the sound. And I don't want to do that. I want to get the whole sound. So we're going to be at 90 beats per minute, or, and I'm going to go two measures and then I'm going to fade it out so that our sample plays like, like that, but as you hold the key, it'll fade out. So I'm going to go eight beats total here. As soon as I start clicking, I'll get a four beat intro and I'm going to play it. So here we go. And there we go. There's our, our sample. And I'm going to immediately just trim this thing down a little bit. We're going to use this little triangle here to listen to it. Object is do I uh, do I like the beginning of it? No. If you look really carefully at this, you will see you can expand this out just like you use your tele on your telephone. You can see how far away that is. We don't want any gap there. Have any gap there is going to throw off our timing. This little box up here shows this whole sample. I can just track it over there and bring this over. Blow it up even more until you get to look at the waves and start this right at the beginning. And you can see the end has got some dead spots there too. So this knob goes at the beginning and this knob goes at the end. So I'm going to cut this off right here. Now you can see it's, it's named this PC really weird number. So if I press that we can now go to file and rename. There's the name. We're going to clear that out and rename that S and I'm going to call this S, uh, S left and you'll find out why later we're doing that. It's enter back to file again trim. By hitting trim don't hit this button over here hit the OK. These are two separate buttons. If you hit trim and save it'll miss it. If you hit OK and there we have it. There's our trim down sample. Go back to preset, save the entire preset, back to pads, into the second info level under main. We need to we need because it, because we're playing this as a synth, we want 
it to play we want it to play like it is uh, like it's an instrument if I don't put the gate on there and I just put trigger every time I press a key on the keyboard it's going it's going to play the whole sample so we're going to go to gate and because I played a specific note which was a C2 we're going to go to root note and label this C2 because that's the exact note that I played So you see, as long as, I, long as I hold the key down, it will stay and you know, eventually go to the very end of the sample and fade out. So it's a very playable sample now. And there's our first set. Now, I'm going to do a different different sound on this one. This one's going to be center. I'm going to warm this one up a little bit. This bass. So now we're going to record that and the bass. Again it's going to fade out in about a measure and a half. And there's our new sample, and you can see, I like to let that first beat go. You can see there's a gap. There's a gap again, because I want to make sure I get the full beginning of that first sample. So let's try the beginning here. And let's go to the end. Changes the trigger to a uh, gate. So let's do the same thing. We're going to go to File, Rename, Clear. Let's just call this S Y N. C N for set center enter file trim okay and there we have our completed sample you can stop playing at any time you want or you can let it go through the Okay, so now we got this sample. It sounds different than, and then this one's got more bass. So let's make another sample over here, and this is going to be the right channel because we're going to make a stereo. Uh, we're going to make stereo out of this monophonic uh, synthesizer that can only play one note and can only play center stereo, center, center mono. We're going to make it stereo, and we're going to make polyphony. So now, I'm going to take that bass out, and I'm going to put, I'm going to put pulse width in there. So now we got this sound to record. And let's just go right to beginning 
trim that. see so we can trim that. Again, we're going to rename the file. And this is going to be clear SYN. You can see my, uh, not the greatest here, SYN, and this is going to be right channel. Enter. File, trim, OK. And there's our perfectly trimmed file. But we need to get off of trigger mode and go to gate so we can actually play it. And how do we do it on the beginning here anyway? See, so we can. We can keep enlarging this thing right until we actually see the wave. And you can see there's actually a little gap there. So I can I can retrim that. Now it's perfect. Three synth tones now. Okay, now we got we got three separate samples, and they're all monophonic, and they're all in the center as a, instead of a stereo image. So what do we do? Let's start with this one. We're going to go to MIDI, and the MIDI channel I've got on my keyboard. So when we go back and we watch these pads as I play the keyboard, you see only one's being activated. But I want to activate all three. So we go to MIDI on the second one, and I turn that to the, this, uh, this MIDI channel 11 matches the keyboard that I'm sending, MIDI channel 11. Then we go to the little square deal up here where we can skip right to the next one and again put in number 11. Now all three of these should sound at the same time. Too short. Somehow I got a way too short sample there. So that's no good. We're going to have to redo that. So how hard is that to redo? Not too hard at all. Clear. Back to here. Back to my original setup that, that created that. Longer, make that sample four, uh, eight beats long. Okay, so now we go back and do do all our repeat the same thing to make this.
Enter. File. Trim. OK. On to our settings here where we want to make this a gate. And we want to go to MIDI and bring that in on channel 11. Now when we go to the pads, this should be about as long as this one. So now when we hit it, you can watch how long those samples are when I play all three at the same time. Pretty cool when you play them all together, isn't it? And even though it's still mono. So now we're going to finish this up. We're going to go to this. We're going to go to the mix button, which we've never been for in these tutorials. The mix gives us a chance to uh, change the overall levels of each pad and pan. Another powerful feature. I'm panning that one far left. I'm panning this one far right and now now when I play this key you're gonna get stereo for the first time pretty darn cool but we also It's no longer a mono synth. It's no longer a non-stereo image. It's now a full Now we can play mono and and chords. So we've made our own instrument. Now we could leave it just like this and play everything on channel 11 if you want, or we can do something a little trickier and let's choose another empty pad. And what we're going to do is resample all of these into one into one instrument, one one pad. We don't need to take up three pads once we've finished working on this. Now the other thing we can do as a final is we have, we also have pitch control. So right now I'm on the right channel. Watch what happens when I change pitch. If you, if you detune just a little bit, I'm going to go plus you plus a 0 0.3 semitone and then over on the left channel minus 3 now it even gets bigger now we've just created a really big synth I'm going to go to presets save my whole thing now if you don't want to get rid of these you don't have to but I'm going to show you how to play all three make all three just one pad instrument now so, as you can see, by the all of them are playing at the same time. So now on this one, we're going to, instead of left-right, we're going to make this resample. See that? And it's gotten so big, we got to take the recording gain down a little too. Now when I record this, it's going to record all those synths and put it onto one pad.
one sample that's playing all the pads. With almost three pads at the same time. Now we just have to go back and do what we did with our other ones, and that's trim it down. Trim it down for this for this sample. Change it to trigger mode to the gate mode. This will be our synth. And we'll just call this big. Enter. That gives it the name. We gotta go back to file to trim it. And here we have our brand new playable synth. Now if you don't like the way it plays, we can still go back and fine tune this this full synth now in ADSR. What a want to make it a slower, slower type. You can put some release on it. homemade synth that came from this original sound. I gotta get off a resample here. Here's our original sound. My synth, model synth can could produce is that sound right there. But instead, we got this one now. And that sound design on the black box, pretty damn cool. Pretty damn cool. All I've got is this little micro boot, two hundred fifty dollar synthesizer, and I'm getting to make sounds like this. That sound doesn't even have effects on it. What do you say we go in there, go to the effects screen, which we haven't used yet, and select reverb. Where do I want the reverb to go? How much do I want? Cool.